Hey guys, so a question I keep getting, and one that I keep seeing on Facebook as well is, you know, the Creality CR10, the TiVo Tornado, these printers cost less than 400 bucks. My friends have them, uh, they're getting outstanding results. I don't have a 3D printer yet, but I'm thinking about getting one. What do you think about me getting this one? Well, let's explore that question. Hey guys, it's Paul and yeah, so I've seen a lot of chatter on Facebook and the support forums and what have you that I hang out at about the Creality CR10 and uh, most recently the TiVo Tornado. Uh, Tornado. Uh, the Tornado is, well from the news I've seen so far, it's way behind on orders. Uh, I have one on order, I want to try it out. And uh, it's a nice little upgrade from a CR10. Uh, primarily because it has a uh, AC powered bed so it does heat up a lot faster, uh, a different print surface and a few other little perks. So, But these Chinese printers are really kind of taking over the 3D printing world, especially for a lot of people that are thinking about just getting into this or if you're an experienced 3D printer, these printers offer very large print volumes that you, well, quite frankly, you'd have to pay, you know, two, three, four thousand dollars or more to get printers that could do this. So the, the, the pros of these uh, new printers is quite frankly that they're cheap. You can get a CR10 for between 300 and I guess 350 bucks on up to 650. Um, again, the large print volume and well, for the most part, I mean, not much goes wrong with them as far as shipping goes. Um, I have seen a few horror stories and there are some American vendors. Um, for example, I know Printed Solid and uh, Tiny Machines, what they do is when they receive their machines, they unbox them, they, they assemble them, and they test them and uh, make sure everything's okay. So if you're, you've had a bad experience getting stuff from China or if you're worried about, well, will it show up and work okay, you can pay a little extra, but you can buy the printer from these vendors and what they'll do is they will have pre-tested the machine and you know the machine that you're getting is all right. So. The cons of these kind of machines is that, well, effectively, um, you don't have any support. I mean, they do have a limited amount of information on their websites, but frankly, they're from China, and they crank these printers out, and they get them out as cheaply as possible, and really, they, they, they have no warranty. Pretty much everyone I've spoken to that's had a problem with these printers, uh, when they've reached back to the manufacturer, they really haven't heard anything. Now, there's been a few exceptions to that rule, but again, for the most part, um, you know, you're getting what you pay for. You are getting a very inexpensive printer and it's coming over from China and the components being used on it, you got no idea. Uh, you know, is it a clone? Uh, you know, the stepper motors, you know, the Bowden tube, uh, the, the extruder, you got no idea. And of course, the other problem a lot of folks have had has been that the beds have been warped. Uh, there has been some that have had bad glass, some that have had the heated bed is very, very warpy underneath that glass. So. This all falls under <clears throat> your mileage may vary. Which brings me to this point. Is this a good first printer? If you're dying to get your first 3D printer and you're seeing these printers for sale for under 500 bucks, you're probably frothing at the bit and wondering, well, <laughs> is this the one to get? And in the background over here, I have an Ultimaker 2 Plus. That sells brand new for $24.99. So, and it does not have the print volume of a CR10. It only prints eight inches by eight inches by eight inches. So most folks are gonna look at that Ultimaker and they're gonna look at the CR10 or the TiVo Tornado and go, it's a no brainer. The, the TiVo and the, the CR10 can print just as good, if not bigger than that thing. Well, the Ultimaker has a strong support system behind it. Um, the Cura software, for example, is made by Ultimaker. So you know that if you buy, for example, the Ultimaker, that if you use Cura, you have all that direct support right there. The Ultimaker has a one-year warranty, so if you have any issues, you contact the company, and if it's something that they need to replace, they'll take care of it. You have that warranty. And even beyond the one-year warranty, you have the online support, and they do have an extremely extensive online support system. Uh, and of course, then they also have the Facebook groups and various forums that also talk about Ultimaker. So, when you look at what is currently out there for a lot more money and compare it to your CR10, you, you just have to look at the full picture. Now, this is more of an introspective question about you, the potential buyer. 
especially if you're a first time printer buyer. How self-motivated are you? Are you easily frustrated? Are you expecting this thing to work prop properly right outside the box? Because these printers do require a little bit of calibration. There's a lot of, you know, obviously that you've seen a lot of the videos where they unbox it, they calibrate the bed, they, they adjust the bed, they load up the file, they print, and everything, everything looks great. Well, maybe. Now, if you're doing a lot of project stuff like I've been doing, like for BB-8 and some of the other projects, you want to make sure that the pieces that are coming off that printer are dimensionally accurate. So what you do is you calibrate the printer. And what you do is, as I've done with my other printers, is you do tons and tons and tons of calibration cubes to make sure that all X, Y, and Z are showing up with the proper measurements. And if they're not, you have to go through the E steps and calibrate the printer. Now, if what I just said to you sounds like Greek, <laughs> you know, that's this is a little bit of the what it takes to learn how to be an advanced user of your 3D printer. Now, I don't say this stuff to scare you. I'm just letting you know that there is a difference between a printer that comes out of the box ready to go for $2,499 versus one that you put together and it seems like everything's working and you print like crazy and you encounter a few issues, but you manage to get printing. <laughs> so, um, and then like I said, there's other printers besides the Ultimaker that have strong support systems. There's Lulzbot, there's the N2 Plus, which is another large scale printer. And if you want to save some money and you don't want to print this large, there's also the Prusa i3 Mark II and now Mark III. Uh, those come in kits or pre-assembled and pre-calibrated and they make sure they're all set to go. And if you've done any research on Prusa, you know that his printers have a strong following. They got a great support system and they've, they're really excellent printers. So the other thing I will say about these inexpensive printers is that if you already have a printer, if you already have an Ultimaker, or if you already have a Prusa or whatever, if you have the experience of owning a 3D printer, debugging some problems, getting it going, getting it reliable, learning how to uh, align and uh, do the bed calibration and everything else, then getting a printer like the CR10 or the TiVo Tornado or whatever else shows up next, it should not be very hard for you at all because you basically, you've gone through the hard knocks, you've learned how to use a 3D printer, you're, you understand your capabilities, and a printer like that should not be that big a challenge. Now, of course, there's always gonna be issues where if you do have any kind of failures on the printer, if the power supply goes, if the Z coupler goes, you may wind up being a little bit outside of your comfort zone. If you've already put together a 3D printer or done some minor repairs and you don't mind getting in there and messing around with stuff, okay, no problem. So, I said all the scary stuff, especially if you're a, a, someone that does not own a 3D printer yet but have been thinking about it. The biggest thing you need to do before you read all these reviews or watch these reviews that say, yeah, it's awesome, you gotta go get one, you really need to pause, evaluate yourself, and decide what's your comfort factor. If you're willing to deal with a little bit of the limited support that's available online for these printers, and if you're comfortable with <laughs> learning how to do these things in a kind of awkward online nature, uh, watching a lot of videos, seeing some tutorials, then these printers aren't, aren't a bad deal at all. Uh, like I said, otherwise I, I, I wouldn't have a, a Creality CR10 here or the soon to arrive uh, TiVo Tornado. Uh, I've put together an FT5, I built my first Ultimaker, so I've kind of built up that skill set where I don't mind getting my hands dirty, messing around and playing with these things. But there are some folks out there that they have a very low frustration level, and if the printer doesn't work perfect out of the box, it's really going to be a lousy experience for them. So, I've said a lot, I hope I answered all your questions. Figure out what your comfort zone is, watch those reviews. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you decide to get one, tell me about it. Now, remember one more thing. This is where nerdy is cool.